Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to test this. Uh, this is going to be a two-parter, I think. Um, maybe even three parts. We're going to test this uh, speaker crossover. It's a two-way crossover, 150 watts. It's by AudioPipe. It's like around 13 bucks, under $13 on Amazon. I'll put the link below. Uh, 150 watts. It looks like it has nice parts. That's why I picked it out. So, uh, I'll pull it out of the thing. We'll bring it up a little closer. And what we're going to do, it's got a nice little plastic protective cover over it. So, it's a CRX203, two-way. So, 150 watt, uh, 300 watt peak is what they say. So, we'll give it a test, okay? We're going to see where the crossover points are. I'll show you the spec on it. By the way, here's the specs on this crossover. So right around 4 kilohertz, it crosses over from the tweeter to the woofer. And it says it does so in 12 dBs. So we'll test that out, okay? And it says in a 4 ohm, so we'll test 4 ohm speaker. But we'll test it out and see how it works. And I still have this class D amplifier. What we're going to do is first we'll test it like I did the three-way crossover, which I think we'll retest that as, as well. But then we'll test it with actual power going through it and see how that works out. We'll do the Bode plot on them, okay? So, yeah, let's check it out. All right, so let's come over here and test this uh, crossover. All right, guys, and here's this setup. Uh, try to ignore all this junk, okay? <laughs> That's a Class D amp I'm working on. Uh, I think we're gonna use that for part two of this. We're gonna put some power into this, but, uh, so, and that's kind of blurred on me. It was wet, I guess, when I grabbed it, but anyway, two four ohm, 200 watt loads right here and they're coming around here and they're connected into this block these two terminals up here are the tweeter minus and plus woofer minus plus and input minus and plus and by the way the minus 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 they're all hard connected there's as far as I can tell there's no componentry it's all just shorted in there okay so channel one uh, voltage probe right here it is in times 10x position and it's on the input the input signal right here this red and black little grabber it's coming from this coax right here and this is coming from generator one on the output of the scope and our Hantec CC65 is set in the times 10 position right here put a new battery in it so we're good to go there and the current is going from red it's going in the top and out the bottom that's how it goes there's no arrow on this thing that's one thing you got to know if you have one of these guys current goes from the top side down for positive to negative okay so it's monitoring the current in here we're going to do that for the impedance because for impedance we're going to monitor current and voltage and voltage divided by current will give us the resistance the impedance going to the input of this and that's the impedance that the amplifier will see as it's connected to this and we'll do the bully plot between the input and the woofer and the input and the tweeter okay and then this filter we're going to open it up and look at it the next um, video okay we're going to tear that in tear it into that and we're going to put a power signal through here instead of just this uh, you know generator signal this low amplitude okay but let's go look at the bully plot and the input impedance of the filter the way it sits now. Okay, guys, so let's just go over the setup, okay? So right here, channel one, I have the scope going into it. I don't really need this guy right now. I'll take it out. So channel one is looking at the input voltage. And channel three is the current probe. That is looking at the current going in. So... We're going to measure uh, the voltage divided by current is ohms. Okay, so what we do now, what I've got is here's a signal coming from the generator. The generator right here is coming out from the back of channel one of the generator. There's two channels, it's coming out of channel one and going into the input. Okay, so that's this BNC cable right here coming around the back of the scope. All right, and so I've got a signal coming out and Right now I've got uh, channel one, it's just AC coupled, 
1 meg inverts off full bandwidth and 10x setting. Channel 3 AC it's the same thing except for this is uh, set for a current probe. It's just you know it gives you current reading instead of voltage. Other than that it's the same thing it's 10x scale. Okay I think we're all set up and the scope as it does this body plot it'll adjust the the vertical scale and the horizontal uh, frequency scale um, as it plots the body, okay? So what we do is we go to the Applications button. We come down here to Applications. Then we have all these applications. What we'll do is we'll come over here to the FRA. FRA is Frequency Response Analysis. Okay, so there we are. I think we're all set up. So I say Select. It says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And we're at this window. So just to show you the reference circuit, uh, here's the scope. Here I'll zoom in just a touch. Uh, simplified diagram, scope, and device under test, DUT. Generator channel 1 comes out, goes into the input. Uh, current probe, it's actually on channel 3. And it's reading the current coming in. And the output is actually reading the voltage right here. So we're not set up for gain phase. We're set up for impedance into the device under test. Let's go to setup. So the input is channel 3. That's the current. And the output is channel 1, the voltage. So it's output divided by input. And we're going to go, let's see, 15 is the... Least resolution, 30, 45, 90. Let's just go to 30. That'll be, I think, plenty. And it just goes a little faster. So once we run it, we can analyze it. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so up in this window, you can see the voltage and current like we could when we were looking at the uh, freak, you know, uh, before we went to the voltage plot window. And you can see it adjusting the vertical amplitude and the horizontal amplitude. And we're starting with phase in red coming out right here. And that's about, it's probably about zero degrees, I guess. That grid line is uh, nine right now. It's, it's automatically adjusting. Now the blue one's the gain. And this grid line's 12 dBs. So it's, right now they're both coming fairly flat. And up here you can see they're in phase. So that's good. And the red one's kind of showing they're somewhat in phase. It's only about 9 or 12 degrees out right now. So the impedance changes as the crossover points. It kind of runs into the crossover points because, you know, it makes sense, right? And now I'm you know, I didn't show you in the frequency setup. We'll go back and look at it. But I was set for 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz. So really the audio band is this line right here, 20 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz is right there. So each one of these lines, it's logarithmic. So that's a decade. Here's a decade. Another decade. Starts at 100, 1K, 10K, 100K. And then the, you see the... 100 hertz, 200 hertz is pretty far away, and they get, you know, progressively closer with each, uh, you know, with each grid. All right, so that was 14 dB, pretty, pretty flat, and then it kind of went up to about 19 dB, and then at 20 k, it's it's coming back down, and so it's fairly flat, and then it kind of shoots up at higher frequencies. The phase was about minus 15 it went up to about plus 30 and then kind of did this whoop to do drop down to zero but you know it's only changing 15 30 degrees so not too bad you know for going through this crossover where we're going from a low pass to a high pass so that's the input impedance that the amplifier would see and that's with two 4 ohm loads on each output for the tweeter and the woofer output. So 14, this grid right across here would represent about five ohms. 
and or 9 dB. This 9 dB here, so that's about 5 dB between the grid. So if it's down 1 dB, let's say, that's about 4.5 ohms. So it's about 4.5 to about 5 ohms right here. And it goes up to, so this is getting close to about 9 ohms right up in here. And then it drops back down. And then this is, you know, this is out of the audio bound here. But yeah, then Pink's kind of goes up a little bit. And... Okay, so now I think we're set to do the Bode plot for the woofer. So let's go ahead and do that. It's the low pass filter. What I have here, just quickly set up the channels. Channel. All right, so let's just go through a quick uh, scope setup. Right here I have a cable coming around from the back of the, the scope where it's plugged into generator one output. And that's going into the input filter. Channel one is looking at the voltage going into the input filter. And channel two is looking at the voltage uh, going into the, uh, or coming out of the woofer section of the filter. Okay, so we'll look at the voltage plot of the woofer section first. Whoops, let's turn that one on, turn this guy off. And then we'll just check the setup. AC coupled, one mag, 10x. And same for this guy. So they're both set up the same way. Yep. Okay, so we're all set up here. Now we just go up the app button. And then that comes up the application button here. So I hit that. Here's my different applications. I want the frequency response analysis, which is the body plot. Come over here for that. Select it, confirm that I want it. Now I have this window here. All right, so we're just zoomed in a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to setup here. And right now it's on channel three. I wanna do the input on channel one and the output on channel two. All right, so now we're set up and we can see the signals up here and Let's see, uh, this guy right here is on points per decade. Let's see where we are. Uh, this 30, we can go down 15 up to 90. I think 30 is a good point start. Reference circuit, uh, scope, generator one output, coming to the input of our filter, channel one to our input. So we're hooked up just like this. We don't have to be because we can, in the setup we can decide which channels we're going in but we're basically set up this way well we are set up this way <laughs> so let's go to run you know what let me stop this for a sec I forgot to show you something here yeah we're gonna okay in the setup here what well, the other thing I want to show you is uh, the generator setup button right here so we're at 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. So we have equal decades across here. And the amplitude's maxed out at 2.5. That's max for that. And impedance is low. So because we're kind of going into low impedance low. So let's see. I think we're ready to go ahead and run. Okay, so we can see this the scope adjusting the vertical and the horizontal scales to keep them, you know, where they can read get good readings. And wow, look how flat it's coming out. There's zero dB, the blue one. The red one's phase, and it's zero degrees. So wow, they're coming out super flat. So it's kind of coming along slow because we have 30 points. So yeah, that was plenty enough points to get a good graph. Okay, now things move a little quicker as we go across the frequency. It looks like phase is dropping a little bit. So it's auto adjusting the scale here. That's why it looked like a bumped up. The gain is still really flat. Okay, now it's rolling off. We're, I think it, Okay, the, it said it would roll off right around 4.3 kilohertz. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let's do this thing right here. And I'm going to go to the scale. And I'm going to put the phase where we can have a zero on the grid somewhere. Okay, that's the gain. 
Let me. Go. Oh, that's how many uh, degrees per grid. So let's do the offset. Okay, so I have zero degrees right here. So it started off at zero degrees, and then right at the crossover, it should be 45 degrees. So let's see where 45 is. Right here is that second line. So this is 1K, 2K, 3K. So it looks like it crossed over at 3K, and this should be about 3 dBs down. And there's zero, and there's 5 dBs. So here's zero dBs, and there's 5 dBs. Yeah, it looks like four, 3 to 4. So, and if I... Yeah, if I'm really picky, if I go 45, it's just before that line. So, yeah, it looks like it's about 3 dB. So, it looks like it's rolling over about where it should. So, it goes 45 degrees at the roll off and then finishes up at around 90. But it, it actually didn't. It kind of flattened out at 75. I would have kind of almost expected to go to 90. So, what I think is happening is the other section of the filter is kicking in and kind of changing the phase again. It's kind of impacting uh, this output, but you know we're so far down the gain we don't really care. So uh, let's see, yeah, we're down like you know 60 bs. We're out here at two, three, four, five k, and then as far as the roll off, it's uh, let's see, it was saying 12 dBs per octave, which is every time you double the frequency. So let's go 10 to 20. That's about one grid. About halfway through this one, halfway through that one. That's about an octave. And this is 5 degrees per grid. So that's about 10. So yeah, it's pretty close to 10 or 12 dBs per octave, I guess. The other way to say it is 20 dBs per decade, right? And so if we go, let's say that's fairly flat through here. So if we go to 100K to 10K, uh, it's down here at minus 30. And so at minus 10, you'd expect it to be on that line. So it's actually, you know, it's actually not quite as steep, but it's probably because at this point we're already rolling off. So yeah, you probably, it's probably changing the, angle right through here slightly that's kind of hard to see so we can come to measure and we can turn on cursors and cursor one I can bring over here to let's say right so I can watch it right here so I can come to 10 kilohertz where I am okay now cursor two I can go to 20 kilohertz so that would be an octave. Okay, I'm 19K there and 22 there. So it's kind of jumping between. It's kind of hard to get it right on. So between there and there, we've got about 5 dB. Oh, yeah, it's only about 5 dBs. I was saying 10 before. It's 5 dB. I, yeah, I keep forgetting. It's 5 dB per thing here. So, yeah, so it really doesn't look... it and. That kind of corresponds with the 20 dB per decade. So a 12 uh, dB per octave should have been a 40 dB per decade. So it looks like this woofer really doesn't roll off at 12 dBs per octave, uh, which would kind of talk to you about a two-pole filter. So it looks more like a one-pole filter, and it's only 6 dBs per octave. It does call out a 4 ohm load, which is what I have. Okay, let's go look at the tweeter. Maybe it'll be different. All right, so what I did is I moved the camera to get a little more straight shot at the screen. And here's what we just did. Okay, so kind of remember the roll off. We're saying it rolled off probably. Here, I'm going to take uh, cursor 1, and we'll go up to, to the top of the screen here, right around in there. And it says we're... About 0 0.6 minus 0 0.66 minus 0 0.7. If I roll across here, it's pretty flat. It's about around minus 0.6. So I'll come right around there, say, or uh, let's say right here, up in this flat section, we're minus 0 0.61. Okay, right here. Now let's take cursor two. So I'll take this cursor and we'll come up to minus 3.6. So that will be about a 3 dB roll-off, right? Okay, I'm kind of in between again. 
I guess if I would have went more points, it, I pr probably could have got better resolution here with my cursors. Uh, but anyway, so we're right around 2.5 kilohertz. And it was calling out for uh, about a 4.3 kilohertz. So I don't really see that. And, you know, I am using forum load, a resistive load, which is what they're calling out is 4 ohms. So, okay. So now let's just remember that 2.5K was the roll-off point. Now let's, I'm all set up. I, I moved this uh, Channel 2 Scope Pro to the tweeter output. So let's go ahead and go back and run that one. Okay, it's kind of calibrating. It's uh, Well, actually, it's way down here at minus 41 dBs. So... Yeah, this is the cutoff area, and then we'll we'll come we'll slope up out here somewhere, you know, up in here hopefully, and we'll come up to around zero dBs, I, I would think. And the phase is also very flat through here. It's it's uh that's about three, so it's close to zero degrees out here. So we're not getting much signal. Or phase it's all kind of flat and it's way down at minus 41 so the tweeter is not getting any of this low frequency uh, amplitude wow that phase is really taken off it's going up to about 90 degrees there okay now it flattens off wow now it's taken it's <laughs> It's literally taking a 180 degree shift. Okay, so yeah, that was really low and it came up to close to 0 dB. So about minus 1 dB, which, you know, there's some loss in, in the uh, connectivity. Yeah, the phase right through here goes back down to close to 0. But, you know, this crossover thing, we will probably, at the crossover, we should have about 45 but if it's uh, 12 dBs per octave, we'll have 90 degree. So, and from what I'm seeing, it looks like we're, we have a better chance of having a 12 dB per octave shift. So, uh, this is pretty steep here. Let's pull up our analysis here. Let's go here. Let's set the scale for our offset. Let's get a zero on here somewhere. Okay, there's our zero right here. And I'm going to get a zero on the gain, too. Okay, so we have a zero right here. So that's close to zero right here at the end. Okay, now let's go to measure. Turn the cursors on. There's where our cursors were before where we left them, it looks like. Yeah, two and a half. Uh, cursors two is that two and a half K. So that's where the other one crossed over. So let's just move cursor one. And let's come up here at the end. That, see, that's, you know, that's close to 0 dBs. It's minus 1. Okay, let's go down to minus 4. Okay, there's minus 4 right there. So, it looks like it's kind of crossing over more like 10K. But if we go to minus 6 dB, if it's a 12 dB per octave. So, minus 7, we're about uh, 7 kilohertz. And this guy's pretty steep through here. Let's see if we can measure that. Let's find two points. Okay, I'll put cursor one right there, which is about 1.9K. It's almost 2K, so we'll call it 2K. And then we'll put this one at 4K. There's 4K. And the gain difference is about 13 dB. So yes, we're getting a good 12 dBs per octave on, on this... Uh, tweeter filler so it's which is good the tweeter's not going to see any of that low frequency stuff uh thing is is the crossover points are kind of spread out a little bit you know but yeah because the woofer was dropping off at two and a half k and so there's kind of a point right in the two to three k area where there's some attenuation a little more attenuation on the woofer than we'd probably want so it'd probably be good to move that woofer over a little bit. 
Hey guys, so what do you think? Did you like it? Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, the penis is pretty flat. What was it, around 5 ohms or, you know, for most of the, the way? Um, so, that, that's good. It kind of has the bumps during the crossover area, which I think that's to be expected. Uh, trying to make that smoother would probably be more ideal. I think the fact that the crossovers were a little bit too far apart, I think the low frequency is supposed to be a little bit higher. I think moving that over a little bit would help. Um, it's probably, I'm guessing, the tolerance of the inductors that might have thrown it off a little bit. So the next video, hey, by the way, before I go on this, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Uh, like the video if you like it. That helps a lot. helps the channel. And thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, and thanks for everybody for watching. That supports as well. So, okay, back to this guy. So this guy... If uh, what we want to do is we want to run some power through it and see how that changes things, okay? So I'm going to take the signal from this guy, run it through the class D amplifier I have here, and then we'll we'll run some power into this. Uh, maybe we'll get up to the 150 watts even, and then we'll see how it distributes the you know the signal that way. We'll redo basically what we did today, but instead of a two and a half volt signal, which I kind of call small signal stuff. We're going to run power signal through this, see how that fares. All right, so that'll be the next video on this guy. And by the way, if you have stuck around, I want to talk about this meter. I'm kind of organizing my garage, been here for over two years, so it's time to do that, right? And I just happened to find some meters. Thought I had them all, but found some more meters. And as a matter of fact, when I clean out my storage, I think I'm going to find even more. So I'm going to start giving a meter away every once in a while. And I think what I'm going to do is I haven't been able to do extra content for my patrons. And if you don't know what a Patreon is, it's somebody who just kind of subscribes to the channel. There's a link below. I think you can do a dollar, two dollars a month, something like that. And, um, you know, all that helps because I need to buy some speaker drivers to actually... I need to buy some speaker drivers to actually test this with real speaker drivers. People want to see that. Using resistive loads is a way to kind of even the playing field because we don't know what the driver is going to do, but we need to test at least one driver to get a representation to see how a driver actually affects a crossover, right? So I need to buy some of those. And meanwhile, uh, so the Patreon thing, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this meter away to one of my Patreons, okay? And got something else special coming in the mail from uh, some a benefactor that's gonna be really cool, gonna excite you guys, and I'll give that away as well. Anyway, so this is a Fluke 27. This is an older model. There's a Series 2 out now, but this guy is extra big and heavy, robust, because all the things you like about Fluke being reliable and all that, this guy is just a little extra safe. And I think this is industrial use and yellow so it stands out you don't lose it on site uh, and it has a MSHA sticker back here and what that is is the mining safety health administration I think is what they call them and essentially what I think that meant was that if you use this in a mining operation somewhere around let's say a uh, place where there's fuel right um, that if there's something that goes wrong inside the meter it doesn't spark arc create a you know explosive atmosphere kind of problem you know and so now this meter I can tell you right down here there's a little chip it must have crashed and hit the corner right there so maybe some epoxy to kind of hold that together I mean it's been like that since I've had it for years but you know maybe just to seal that up because I don't think the MSHA guys would approve that with the you know with having a crack there but so I'm going to give this meter away I'm going to clean it up, and I mean, I got some stuff to clean up meters. We're going to try that out, and uh, yeah, so this is a per first pre preview, and you guys have some ideas how I can select a Patreon. Uh, let me know. All right, guys. Hey, I hope you liked the video, and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.